the magnificent mamba. No matter if it's green or black, they have that iconic coffin head shape. That is one of the most beautiful venomous reptiles on our planet. Right up there with the Gaboon Vipers, the Bushmasters, the green mambas have to be the most beautiful. This snake, along with the other snake species found in people's homes that end up biting them, they come in for the rats because what happens is these people end up throwing their foods away that they don't finish and they, whoop, they literally attract rats which bring in the snakes like this which love to eat rats. Look at this snake. This is, this is the ultimate snake. I mean, you don't even see King Brown's uh, pygmies, let alone a true King Brown. You don't see these in zoo. Whoop! You don't see these guys in zoos probably for a good reason. Maybe they don't want their staff handling stuff like this. What's going on, my beautiful, wonderful, sexy people? Welcome back to my wildlife. We're out here in the Serpentarium with all kinds of good stuff going on. I mean, look at this. Look at this. We're moving into the future, baby. Look at this. It's called framing. Ever heard of it? <laughs> look at this. This is great. Literally, we're finally moving on. Three and a half months of being handcuffed, not being able to do anything because the county around me is trying to fight me living here with my wildlife. Now I'm able to stay. We're gonna finish building out the Serpentarium. This is the framing. It's gonna be drywall all around encasing this garage door, making it not in use anymore, which it already isn't in use with the garage door sealed up from the outside. But now we're doing it from the inside, and then from there, all of this will be drywall. All of it, use your imagination. I am so excited. But you know what I'm more excited about? The green mambas, they finally shed. Look at this, look at this. Two sheds from two beautiful East African green mambas. One of the most potent neurotoxic snakes on the planet from the most dangerous family on the planet, Dendroaspis, the mambas. Woo! We got green mambas, we got black mambas, we got West mambas, West African mambas, East African mambas, uh, West African, Wafrican, whatever you want to call them. All kinds of crazy stuff going on in Africa. All you got to know is that we're dealing with mambas today. Mambas in general, dangerous, athletic, high potent neurotoxic venom. Not a snake to make any misjudgments with while handling. So what we're going to do is have the snake box ready to go. Let's see. Uh, hmm. All right, so what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna take out both green mambas, put them in the box, clean out their enclosure really good because as you can see, there's poop. There's, a, oh, sorry, spicy meatballs in there. Shed skin, we wanna make sure there's fresh water as well. So first, let me make sure that this green mamba, both of them are in the same spot. Yep, we got both of them in the corner of that cage. So what I'll do is I'll pop out the glass like this. The reason I do it like this is because we have extra insulation between the glass to keep it safe. So you actually have to pull out the glass like that. So let's get this going. You know what? Let's make this safer. I want both mambas in front of me in the box. I don't have to turn around. I don't want to have to turn my back to the mambas. So definitely let's have a box like that. Both of these beautiful mambas have been eating like crazy. Let's just uh, let's get this one through here. Real easy going. You can see they're getting bigger. They're looking more and more beautiful. I mean, whoop. I mean, look at the blue that they've got going on. Whoop. Look at that blue. Try and get the snake to relax for a second. But look at that. You can literally see they got a bluish hue going along their underbelly. White speckling or yellow speckling going in between the greens. Whoop. Gotta be careful because they like to death rot the size. Don't want to make any mistakes like that. Look how beautiful this snake is. Literally, they're gonna be huge in a matter of no time. This snake could easily be five, six foot in about a year and a half or so with a good meal in its belly every week. What are you doing? Checking everything out. Whoop, 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 whoop. Gotta make sure he doesn't get too close to my hands because that would be very, very bad. They are front fixed fanged venomous reptiles. So they don't have to poise their fangs outwards. They're already fixed and ready to go at the front of the face. All right, so we got the mamba. We're good. Let's get this green mamba into the box. Nice and easy. I'm gonna get the other mamba. All right, well, that green mamba's squiggling around. Ruth's gonna keep her eye on it. I'm gonna take out this branch right here, try and make it easier to get this other mamba. You know, mambas are one of the most feared snakes in the world of reptile handling. And with very rightful reasoning, they're so athletic, they're so ready to go. I mean, their metabolism so fast. These snakes are hot. They come from the hot continent where everything wants to eat you. And you literally have to be so aggressive or so defensive because if you're not, you're gonna end up on somebody else's menu. So a little green mamba like this would easily fall prey 
to something much bigger than it, maybe another venomous reptile out there in the land of Africa, a bird of prey, even monitor lizards will actually eat green mambas. All right, the green mambas now on the lip. Let's try and get this, this little man tickled out. Come on, whoop. See that tail of the green mamba? We still have the other green mamba hanging out. Not gonna reach in there, I don't even know where the head is right now. Let's tickle that tail a little more. The other green mamba's still chilling in the box, we're good. All right, this one's crawling down, that's what I wanted. Get him out of this box. There we go. Nice and smooth. Oh, not too smooth. I can't believe it's not like it. Okay, here we go. Look at that. This, I believe it's the male actually. Look at that. A little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Doing really well. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that face because these guys are always all over the place and we always miss out on a nice, beautiful shot of those beautiful eyes, the scalation around their face, and that typical coffin shape. That magnificent mamba. No matter if it's green or black, they have that iconic coffin head shape. It is an amazing looking snake. I mean, look at that. That is one of the most beautiful venomous reptiles on our planet. Right up there with the Kaboon Vipers, the Bushmasters, the green mambas have to be the most beautiful. I mean, emerald green with that yellow scalation breaking through here and there. And as they get older, they'll get a bluish hue. This specific Eastern green mamba locality uh, Dingo Dinkleman gifted this snake to me, along with uh, Tyler Nolan's Mambas, he gifted those to him too. And these snakes are supposed to get a nice, beautiful bluish hue as they get older. Look at this. This is how you can tell this is an arboreal snake. It's literally wrapping its tail around my thumb to feel better anchored, better secure, security. Because, you know, they don't have arms, they don't have legs like a monkey. If I had a monkey right out, the monkey would be holding on to me to get comfortable with its arms and its feet. The mamba doesn't have that luxury, so it wraps its tail around my thumb, which makes it an arboreal species of snake. Whoop. We gotta make sure we have that hook ready, because he could easily shoot back up and get right on my hand. Look at that green mamba wrapping around my fingers. That's incredible. I can't, whoop, I can't wait for one day for us to actually go out to Africa and capture green mambas and remove them from homes and relocate them. Maybe do that with Dingo, that would be amazing. All right, this other green mamba's just chilling. Chilling like a, a super villain, but not a super villain. My little hero, right? My little hero right here. I guess you can gently get this mom to the box. I'm sweating like crazy, not because I'm scared of these snakes, but because it's still hot and humid in the snake house. We don't have an AC unit. So as soon as we get our AC, it's gonna stay a very cool temp, not too cool, roughly around like 75 degrees in here, just to make sure it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. But uh, you can see I'm sweating like crazy because of the humidity in here. You know, it sucks for me, but it's good for the snakes, because as you can tell, uh, with all these shed skins everywhere, they're having no problem breaking out of that old skin. I mean, like, look, complete, or almost completely whole mamba sheds. Look at that. That's really cool. Real clean looking. They got those beautiful scales. Look at that. You gotta love mambas. They're incredible snakes. I'm gonna stick this right here. We actually have Brian Barczyk coming over. Oh my goodness gracious, the great Brian Barczyk is coming to visit us. I cannot wait. I just wanna make sure this place is clean before he gets here. I mean, he's gonna be here in probably an hour. I just wanna make sure everything's nice and tidy and clean before he gets here. It's Brian Barczyk, you know, he's the he's the OG of, uh, of reptiles on YouTube. And to show him the venomous snake room is honestly a bit of a privilege and I wanna make sure everything looks great. Let's see, what's the, what do we got going on here? Oh, it's the head, the head of the mamba where it's shed. That looks really cool. Maybe I'll save that for Brian. I'll keep that right here and keep it for Brian. All right, let's see. I'm gonna get out these sticks, make some room. All right, and now what we're gonna do, honestly, I'm gonna do a deep clean. I'm gonna take out all the mulch, and we're gonna get some fresh, clean mulch for these guys because they're grown like crazy. Like I've said before, the metabolism is fast, so when they eat, they're gonna poop like the next day, no problem. Look, look how much poop, look at all this. This isn't a matter of like two weeks this, or less. This is nothing, pooping all over the place. And I'm giving them multiple rat pinks, so nice big belly means every couple hours or so, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, that's not fresh water. I know where there's some fresh water, I'll be right back. Don't follow me, it's a secret. <laughs> hey, hey! Okie dokie artichokey. Some people would say you want a pan for that? You want a, want a scooper? I don't need a scooper. What's the point of having these? What do I do with my hands? I'll tell you what you gotta do with your hands. You take them like this. You take them. Yeah. And you get a handful. And you get another handful. And you get all of it. 
and you get into it and you get enthusiastic because if, if you're afraid to get dirty, get out of the game. Taking care of animals, working with wildlife, you're basically a maid for these animals. Is that bad? Maybe for some people, but for those people, this is just not for you. If you love animals, if you want to do nothing else but working with animals for the rest of your life, you would have no problem getting neck deep and spicy meatballs for the rest of your life. Because at the end of the day, you keep animals, you're a servant to those animals to make sure they're living the best lives possible. Okay, let's just get the rest of that yummy spiciness in there. This is, this is something else. Honestly, it's a privilege. How many people get to say they clean green mamba crap for a living? I mean, I used to work at Publix when I was a little kid. And then I started doing gator wrestling. Isn't life crazy? All right, so we got that cleaned out for the most part. It's just a little bit of mulch left. Let's get that fresh, yeah! Let's get that fresh mulch in there, nice and humid. Get it! Come on! Come on! Come on! There we go. I'll save this for a rainy day. Alright, so, let me H2O. Hey! Ooh. No. Did you see that? Get a shot. Did you see that? I believe those are dust particles from when I put the mulch in. Not good enough! My little secret spot back there. I got the little fountain of youth. That's why I bought this property. It's my, it's my little secret. Don't tell my neighbors. I tapped into the fountain of youth. They're gonna get angry. They got a random DM. Didn't respond to it though. Uh, the guy said, my, my girlfriend and her family live near you and they hate your guts, but I still love you. Thank you guy for telling me that. All right, let's get the glass. Oh, it's dirty, it's dirty glass. Damn, damn, Brian Barczyk's not gonna approve. Brian Barczyk's not gonna approve. Kevin. Do you think Brian Barczyk will like me? No. Ruth, have you ever watched Brian Barczyk's videos? I used to watch him so much when you I was Used to? Kid. You better not be here when he comes! All right, let's get that glass back in. Nice and easy like that. Almost done. Let's get these sticks back in. Good enough for a mop. Ah, looks like my uh, bioactive setups are doing great. <laughs> All right, just like that, nice and easy. I'm gonna put the glass to the side. I think we can put these moms away now. Let's get serious. All right, beautiful people, comment below. What is your favorite snake? What is your favorite venomous snake? Me, King Cobra. Has to be the King Cobra. Who is the favorite of them all? I love every single one of these little babies equally. But favorite snake species on the planet. I love you, my son. King Cobra so all right, guys, let's get these mamas back where they belong. Let's get the latches off. We're going to put them right here. Hopefully, they're still nice and flaccid. Oh, yeah, they're right here. Look at this, green mambas. Ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed about working with king cobras, black mambas, fertile ants, big saltwater crocodiles, and now I'm living a dream. I literally lived the life I've always dreamed of as a little kid. They told me as a little kid, you can't make money off of working with these reptiles. It's got to be a hobby. You need to get a real job. Look at me now. All right, guys, we're going to put this green mamba back inside of its enclosure. You beautiful, sexy beast. Get in there. All right, now let's get this other one. I believe this is the female. The female's a bit smaller. Look at that. Look at that for a snake. I mean, seriously, the green mamba, one of the most badass alapids on the planet. And honestly, not too bad of a snake. Seems to be pretty placid for the most part. We just don't want this snake to get too close, Kevin. Not now. We just don't want the snake to get too close to the handle. Oh, my hands holding him. Relax, relax. Whoop, 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 whoop. Look at that. Beautiful green mamba. Literally like four plus feet now. Thank you so much, Dingo Dinkleman. Love you. All right, let's get that green mamba back home. I love you. You go, yeah. Oh, you gotta be careful. This one's right here at the lip. All right, now let's get that glass right on there without getting nipped on the fingers. Okay. Nice and secure! Locked. All right, beautiful people. Let's move on to the next snake. Let's actually stick this little piece of foam in there too, just as a little extra oof of security. All right. Let me wipe the sweat from my face and I'll be with you uno momento, por favor. You like that, Ruth? I've been yes. practicing.
right, guys, here we go. This is going to be the next snake on the list for cleaning. Mr. Brown, my little pygmy king brown. Don't let this snake fool you. This snake is still just as potent as its cousin, the true king brown, which gets eight feet long. The pygmy king brown, Sudecus palisi, the specific species, this guy would only get around four feet long, but still poses a very, whoop, poses a very dangerous risk to anybody who comes in encounter with this snake. It will literally shoot out getting spooked. And when this guy's hungry, whoo, you better watch out. You better watch out when he's hungry. Look at this. Nice and easy. Come on. I haven't taken this guy out for you guys to see in a while. My beautiful pygmy king brown. This snake is in the Sudecus family. The black snakes, also including the king brown. And the king brown is not related to the western and eastern brown snakes. The king brown is actually related to the black snake family. So it's literally in Sudecus. You get your Colette snakes, you get your red belly black snakes, you Papuan black snakes, and of course the pygmy king browns, Sudecus palisi. There's multiple species, but this is palisi, a beautiful mainland species found in Australia. Literally, this is a replica of its large cousin, the giant king brown, or just known as the king brown. Literally getting eight feet long. One day, we're gonna join Ricky Mac back in the outback, and we're gonna find ourselves another king brown, because we've already found a king brown about this size, but we've gotta find a beast of a king brown. We gotta find the true king brown of Australia. They're slowly losing their population due to the invasive cane toads out in Australia. The more the cane toads range spreads, the more reptiles tend to die, because they're not evolved to take on the bufo toxin inside the toads. The toads are introduced from South America and now they're found throughout Australia. So the more the toads spread throughout the land, the more snake species we lose. So it's literally right now a race against time for me to be able to experience the King Brown in the wild of Australia. That's why we've got to get back to Australia. We're losing species around the planet at a critical rate. And we've got to share this with you guys. Whoop, gotta be careful. Let's get them inside the box. Nice and easy. Got a king brown and a king cobra right next to each other. Look at that. Oh no, the shed broke. Darn, look at that. It actually was a whole shed, but I believe in all the commotion we broke it. Look at that. Beautiful scalation around the head. The king brown. The pygmy king brown. That's cool. Imagine, eight foot king brown, just like Steve Irwin. Had it in between your legs. I can't wait. It's a dream come true. Everything that's happening to me is a dream come true. Just listen guys, if you want something in life, if, you're, if you feel passionate about something, pursue it. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Everyone's got their thing, their niche. My niche is wildlife. My, my niche is making you guys love wildlife. I love doing this. And I kept pursuing it since I was a little kid and everything fell into place for me. This is an unfathomable job that I, I've created for myself. Doing YouTube, being able to take care of my own wildlife park, not have to work for any wildlife parks anymore because one of the main things you learn growing up is no one's going to take care of your animals as good as you. So that's why ever since I was a little kid, I said, hey, i got to create my own wildlife facility. Take care of animals the way I believe they should be taken care of. And that's the way it's going to go. All right, so let's see. We got some spicy meatball right here. Mamma mia. A little bit on my finger. Look at that. Get a nice shot. That's nice. It's real. This isn't, this isn't movie magic. I'm really doing this. All right, let me get the rest of this out. Let's get the whoop. Look at that. Sometimes when a snake's going through shed, rays, it's going through, it feels so comfortable. It goes to the bathroom. That is a spicy meatball inside a snake uh, cog, uh, shed skin right there. Let's put that down. All right, we're gonna dump this out, it's stagnant. We need the freshest for our little Aussie friend. Don't go chasing waterfalls, cause when you find them, you'll realize that the waterfalls don't have the purest water around you just find it here at Chandler's Wild World and for those of you who are confused it's called Chandler's Wild World the Serpentarium is within Chandler's Wild World and the YouTube channel is called Chandler's Wildlife and then we have the Extra Wildlife channel and we have Chandler's Wild Talk podcast coming later this year as soon as I'm done dumping money on this place. Anyways, we got the freshest of the H of the twos and the O's right here. Ruth, would you, maybe this time you can, you can check it out. Don't put your fingers in it, Ruth. You dirty little, you dirty little thing. Stop it. Look at it. Isn't that nice? Ruth! Get, get away! Get away! Oh my god, sorry. Alright, stay away. This is this is this is for King Brown, Mr. Brown, leave him alone. 
All right, beautiful people, the enclosure's clean. We're good to go. Just a little bit of spritz on the glass. We got the king. Let's put this king brown back as Kevin the King Cobra watches with, with oh so, oh, he doesn't seem to care. Okay, so let's take out the king brown. We're good to go. Let's see. Hey, buddy. Look at this snake. This is, this is the ultimate snake. I mean, you don't even see king browns, uh, pygmies, let alone a true king brown. You don't see these in zoo. Whoop! You don't see these guys in zoos, probably for a good reason. Maybe they don't want their staff handling stuff like this. Uh, but you don't see snakes like this in the US of A. It is very, very fortunate that we get to work with a pygmy king brown. I mean, a true Aussie. It's difficult to get Aussie snakes because way back in the day, they made it where you can't export Aussie wildlife to protect that wildlife, which makes perfect sense, and I totally agree with it. So this is one of the stragglers that came out through either a uh, European market of reptiles or, I don't know, just, uh, this guy originally came from Albert Killian, and this snake is literally like 10 years old now. So it's definitely a pygmy king brown, Sudecus palisi, and that's why it just hasn't grown at all. It's, it's much older. A normal king brown at eight, 10 years old should be literally like seven feet long, 10 feet long, it's a monster snake. All right, so what we're gonna do, is stick this beautiful king brown back where he belongs, Mr. Brown, put him back in brown town. You want to go to Brown Town, buddy? All right, there you go. We're going to close this up. Make sure it's nice and secure! <laughs> All right, beautiful people, let's take out the last snake. Let's get serious. This is the Indian Cobra. This snake is in the top four most responsible for bites in India. In India, there are over 52,000 bites every year from the Russell's Viper, the Indian Cobra, whoop, come down already, the Crate, and the Sawscale Viper. All four of these snakes are highly responsible for people getting bit, not because they don't like people, but simply because throughout India and parts of Asia, they don't have the same methods of disposal as we do. They don't have, whoop, they don't have the same kind of trash pickup or uh, whoop, means of disposal of waste. Swoop. This snake's gone way thicker since I took him out last. Uh, so this, this snake, along with the other snake species found in people's homes that end up biting them, they come in for the rats because what happens is these people end up throwing their foods away that they don't finish and they, whoop, they literally attract rats which bring in the snakes like this which love to eat rats. And just so happens to be, guess what loves to eat cobras like this? King cobras like Kevin behind me. The king cobra loves to chow down on crates Saw scale vipers, Indian cobras, they make an excellent meal for the king cobra. And that's why they get their name, King Cobra. They are the king. No matter how venomous, they will eat that snake and devour it. So if you don't take care of your waste in your home, you will attract snakes like this. And then other snakes will be attracted to those snakes like the king cobras. So you gotta pick and choose your battles. You gotta be able to maintain and keep things clean. But not everywhere people have the ability to do this. So. You gotta have people like the KCC, the King Cobra Conservancy, out there in the lands of India, Thailand, and now Nepal and the Philippines, where they actually educate the public about these snakes and help prevent bites, help prevent people from getting tagged by these snakes, and also help people identify these snakes to keep themselves safe. They pass out pamphlets, they pass out flashlights so people can see where they step at night and not get bit, because not everyone has access to things like batteries, flashlights, uh, the internet to Google what type of snake they're looking at, so definitely support the King Cobra Conservancy. They are an amazing organization devoted to protecting the King Cobra's kingdom and all the beautiful animals within it. Beautiful. Let's get this snake right back over here. Put him in the box. Looking really good too. I mean, like, look at this. Look at the. Like, look at that hood real quick. Look at this. It's got like a bluish hue to it. Look at that's a beautiful snake. Whoop. Beautiful snake. I know he's starting to calm down actually. Starting to lay back, not hood up as much. Look at that. Beautiful Indian Cobra. Naya Naya, the classic Indian Cobra. Whoop. Come on, right back in there. Good snake. Woo! Beautiful animal. All right, let's lock that up. Nice and secure. Let's see what we got cooking. It looked like there's a, new, a lot of nasty stuff going on in here. We're gonna take off the glass completely. Get that water out. It looks like a whole shed, but it's, ooh, it's covered in spicy meatballs. So we'll do Brian a favor and not save that for him. And we're going to take out this hide. 
And you know what? Let's just do a deep clean. I'm going to get out all this mulch, put in fresh mulch, and let's get that Indian cover right back in. I'll see you in a licky split of a Monday, Tuesday, cheesecake, Wednesday, possum. Just a Florida thing. How does my mullet look? Pretty good, pretty good. You think they can handle this? Uh, yes. What do you think they're going to think in the comments? They're going to laugh. I don't care! I was acting! I'm not even having a real conversation with Ruth. Everything she says goes one ear out the other. All right, let's get started. We're putting that over there. Let's uh, open this up. Ruth, are you offended? No, because it's true. So we're going to put this Indian coat back. Let's see. Look at that snake just hooding up like crazy. Ooh, I see you. Look at this. Let's see if I can show you guys that hood one more time. This is not a snake to play around with too much. But look at that, look at that beautiful hood. And the snake's just doing that because he feels threatened. So he spreads the ribs out around his, around his neck, flaring up as much as possible to look bigger. And that's the whole concept of a cobra. Look how big I am, look how loud I am. Leave me alone or I'm gonna bite you and envenomate you with a deadly toxin. Just a beautiful snake species. You know, it might be in the top four most responsible for bites in India, but you gotta see the reasons why. It's all about how you live in the environment with wildlife, how you respond to it. No matter where you are on the planet, whether you live in Florida with alligators, or you live in India with tigers and cobras, you just gotta know the ecosystems you live in and try to live your best lives around them. Because they're there first, you know? Like, look at this snake. When that snake just crawled by me, it just went right by my boot, no problem. Look at this, watch. Whoop. This snake wants nothing to do with me. See? Look at that. Wants to leave. Wants nothing to do with me. And that's just proof that it's only when the monkey man grabs the snake by the tail, the snake wants to bite and be defensive. All right, guys, let's put this beautiful snake back. Whoop, relax, relax. Look at that. that famous pair of spectacles on the back. Why they're also called the spectacled cobra. Come on, get in there, beautiful. We got all this fresh mulch. It smells. Let's make sure this is nice and secure. Locked and secure. All right, beautiful, wonderful, extravagant, magnificent people. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure, this journey, you and I. From the very beginning, in that little tiny venomous room, the size of a closet. <clears throat> Whipping out Kevin in the middle, everyone commenting below, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. <laughs> I give this guy six more months, he's gonna die. <laughs> Look at me now, three years later. Look at my kingdom. Looky, looky, everyone who said I was gonna die. <laughs> ha! Ha! Look who wins now. I do, I do. Comment below, were you one of those people? I bet you won't even speak up because you're weak. <laughs> Make me sick. All right, beautiful people, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, always believe in your dreams, stay, don't look at that, stay passionate, never let anyone get in the way of that. Always do what you believe in, because what you believe in is what you were bred to do, is what you were meant to do. If you feel passionate about something, pursue it, because if you can make a living off of your passion, your gold, you'll never work a day in your life. I love you guys, I love you to death, bits and pieces. Maybe this next scene will be with Brian Barczyk, I don't know, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, most of all. Don't forget to check us out on ChandlersWildlife.com. You buy a t-shirt, hat, sticker, anything, you guys are supporting the gold building out this place. It's expensive. YouTube doesn't make enough money for me to be able to pay for everything, the property, Ruth, my bills, and to build this out. So if you guys buy the t-shirts and help us out, it goes a long way. Thank you so much. Support us on Patreon. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, most of all. Give Brian Barczyk a hug. You better watch this collab on his channel. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs>